Well, I'd like to start off by thanking Rappler for this invitation. Uh, Maria, you've done a wonderful job. Keep up the great work. I'd also wanted to acknowledge uh, my former principal, the president of La La Salle, uh, Brother Raymond Asuplido, but I believe just left the room. He was quite formative in my uh, education, and I'm so glad to come back to La Salle. I was here. I won't tell you the dates. I am a graduate of De La Salle. In fact, my elementary years were all spent here in the original campus. And I have a brother here, Philip Romualdez, who similarly is a La Salleite. So anyway, enough of that. Uh, we go now to me, my platform, and I'd like to thank everyone for being here. I'm a three-term congressman hailing from the first district of Leyte. That includes Tacloban City and the seven municipalities. Unfortunately, these were the same municipalities and the city that was the worst hit by the typhoon Yolanda. A little over two years ago, Yolanda struck us. We thought it was over, it was hopeless, we did not know where to begin. My campaign, and if you've seen my commercials on my TVCs, is hinged on the word malasakit. Malasakit, translated, is compassion, empathy. We feel that public service today needs more of that, malasakit. That is critical for public service. Public service without malasakit is just a job. And we know, just like the teaching profession or even people in the media, we do not do it for the money or at least for the salary, because obviously we are not paid well enough. We are glad, of course, that the Senate has passed the standardization law uh, just yesterday uh, to improve the plight of our government workers, but we still have a long way to go. And I feel that an attitudinal change is in order. I'd like to also take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you, the universities, the schools, the deans, the presidents, the officials, and most of all, you students who took time out. Nakiramay po kayo. Tumulong po kayo. You volunteered. You prayed. You gave us relief goods, medicines. You were there, and you were the inspiration that lifted us all. That is why, slowly, we have begun to recover, and I thank you all for that. I would like now to go to my platform. May malasakit na ekonomiya that will push for more jobs. Not just any jobs, but jobs that will give our workers a decent quality of life for himself or for herself and provide for the needs of the family. To provide capital and incentives to small entrepreneurs and industries. One compassionate economy that will provide efficient transport and communication systems, unlike the current state of our MRT and LRT that breaks down causing agony to the commuting public and the slow internet speeds that afflict every one of us today. We are very happy that in the 15th Congress, we had initiated a bill that has become a law, the Go Negotio Law, that has addressed the micro, small, and medium business enterprises, providing capital to small businesses in the rural areas. We shall pursue that agenda as well. May malasakit sa komunidad, where people care about others and help others in need, where we bound in our culture and values are united for our country where we can feel safe and secure, whether in our homes or out on the streets. I dream of a day where kids are in school, not out on the streets, busy sniffing rugby, begging, or peddling drugs. And access to education means not just support until high school, but to more college scholarships. Push for an alternative tertiary education, like online learning to bridge gaps in the learning opportunities. Of course, it's imperative that we have to improve the bandwidth, because our internet is only second to the last. We are just ahead of Afghanistan, and I think it's about time that we address this, and uh, we have to talk to our duopoly to address this situation. We know, and I take this all from Rappler, that uh, our schools, only 20% of our schools, are actually connected. And we know that an improvement of the internet will also improve our economy, so it is critical. We have to address this, and engaging the stakeholders in both Globe and Smart is a step in the right direction. 
Further to that issue, we could also look at the NTC's charter and make it more independent, thereby unleashing the talents and the resources of the stakeholders therein. Also within this uh, malasake to the community is uh, health, where medical services are provided free to those who especially cannot afford it. Hospitals and clinics that won't turn them away because they cannot provide the prohibitive deposits. Universal, universal health care should be parallel to improving facilities, hospitals, health centers, including how to entice more qualified health professionals to choose to stay here and deliver quality health services to fellow Filipinos. The quality of care should not be different regardless of whether you are at Makati Medical Center, St. Luke's, or where you are in a city or a municipal health center in the far flung provinces. Because I believe that a healthy citizen translates to a healthy and productive nation. My Malasakit na gobierno, where public officials are sensitive to the plight of the majority of the citizenry. I repeat, where public officials are sensitive to the plight of the majority of the citizenry. A government that listens and responds to the changing needs of the people, like in the case of the SSS pension hike. A more inclusive field health program. A more responsive government to the abused and exploited sectors of the society, like the OFWs. The government should invest in technology and encourage and not stifle IT solutions to improve the quality of life for Filipinos. In Manila, traffic solutions rely heavily on technology now. Because of the DOTC and the MMDA, their inability to address traffic, commuters or drivers rely on ways. Because of the LFTRB can't discipline or abusive drivers, we see ourselves sharing apps like Uber, Grabcar, which flourish today. With people today glued on social media, and as you can see, most of us are glued onto our laptops, tablets, or our smartphones, we can only expect that the social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and the rise of the new citizenry we call netizens is the future. Technology plays a huge part in our lives, whether we like it or not. During Uganda, being cut off from the rest of the world with no means of communication and no mobile, no landline, no internet was agonizing. Technology bridges the gap and offers real viable solutions. Preparedness, immediate disaster response, like Rappler's hashtag MovePH, a very, very important part of our recovery. We thank you, Rappler, Maria, thank, thank you for you. that. We need to thank we need to take advantage of the new technology for better forecasting and warning systems to help out hazards and to guide us in our land use and regulations. It is time to study how we can incorporate technology-driven solutions for the education and livelihood and healthcare services. Computer literacy, the internet and information and technology should all be made accessible to all. Kahit ilang ilapampagyo ang duman, hindi nito kayang Mayanig ang tibay ng puso at lakas ng loob ng nating mga Pilipino. We all rose from these disasters to rebuild, to start anew, to look forward to a new tomorrow. Dahil merong malasakit. In my public stint, I can honestly say that I have proven that kapag may malasakit, walang imposible. Ako po si Martin Romualdez, isang Pilipino. Handang-handa maging boto mo, boses mo, handang makinig, sa lahat at handang handa ng mga lasakit sa inyo lahat. Dagan salamat, damo ng salamat, mabuhay sa inyo lahat. Thank you.